Our next guests are a brother-sister real estate duo here in San Diego. My good buddy Dale Intrican and his sister Daisha McComb. How are you guys doing? Great. Thanks really for good. having us. Thanks for being here. Of course, Dale, top 10 lender in San Diego based That's on right. the Smarter San Diego poll. I should mention that for mm -hmm. sure. That's right. Always make sure you mention that. I will. I will always. <laughs> Where's your trophy, by the way? I, know, I, I usually around. carry it around in the car and <laughs> take it around with me everywhere I go. It's in your pocket. It's like, speaking of. <laughs> <laughs> it's a great intro. It's a great lead in my appointments. It's, I just put it on the end of the Yeah, that's right. You just set it up Did there. Did you see that? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and Daisha, mm -hmm. you're Dale's sister. You're a real estate agent. I am. Still broker. Canyon Realty, right? Yep. Okay, you're the broker. Yes. Okay, very, very cool. Yes. Well, I think there's a lot of opportunity happening right now in this marketplace, and I look forward to speaking with you guys about that because a lot of people don't know. It's really crazy when prices go up so much so quickly. Mm -hmm. There are a lot of people who are just kind of in the dark, right? You bought your house, and what do you care what prices are now? You know, you're living life, you're going to work, you're taking your kids to practice, and that's mm -hmm. all you're really thinking about. You're not thinking about what real estate prices are. You're no longer looking in the market. You don't realize your home went up $100,000 in value yeah. in the last six, eight months or whatever. But that provides an opportunity on two fronts, in my opinion. First of all, I want to confirm with you, do you see the market uh, is really at a place where it's as high as it's been in quite some time now? Yeah, definitely. Um, it hasn't fully recovered to the point where it was at its highest. Okay. Um, but it's definitely up there and to the point where buyers are starting to even say, well, are, are we in a place where it's going to go down again? Should I wait? And I think Dale will go over it a little bit more on the rates, but taking advantage of the rates now, um, the the forecast for jobs and and the um, employment numbers is good. And so they're really forecasting that the, the values will continue to rise, not as fast as it has been in the last couple of years. But I feel like it's a great opportunity for buyers to get in at these low rates before they start to creep up. Okay, Dale, is that what we're seeing? Have rates kind of, are they the same as where they were last time? Or have they gone yeah, up? Yeah, it's, it's interesting because there's there's a lot of you know volatility in the market overall. You know, we have the, the Fed meeting this week and we have all kinds yeah. of things that are, that are coming out and uh, it's really pushing towards, at some point, rates going up. But right now, it's kind of like the perfect storm with rates so low, prices, you know, increasing for a seller, for a homeowner who's already owns a house to look mm -hmm. at refinancing or using the equity to buy up, get rid of their MI, cash. I mean, there's so many options that they can do right now. Let's go through some of those mm -hmm. options. Uh, I mean, first of all, if I'm a home seller, mm -hmm. let's talk about that Daisha real quick. So okay. if I'm someone who, and when I say I'm a home seller, it doesn't mean that my home is listed on the market right now. It means that I'm someone who's thinking about or knows that my time in this property is limited. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to be here forever. And you start start uh, you know making plans for what's the next step? Mm -hmm. uh, is it going to be a year from now, two years from now, three years from now? That's a home seller. Okay, you're someone who you know you're going to sell your home mm -hmm. in the near future. Right now appears to be a very good time to be a home seller because prices have gone up so much, because interest rates are still low and making things affordable for buyers, um, and the fact that there's also what seems to be a pretty low amount of inventory available, or homes mm -hmm. available for sale out there. Would you call this the perfect storm, you know, for a home seller? I definitely would. Um, you know, I read somewhere that there, we're number three on the list for the lowest inventory in the country. Wow. And so, yeah, so that's an wow. amazing time to sell. Now, that being said, you know, sellers kind of still have that, well, you know, this person down the street sold their house for this much, so I can raise mine 10000 because I have granite countertops, mm -hmm. you know. Um, that's not the case. Buyers are still a little bit wary of the prices, so you want to be priced to sell, to get your to get as many buyers as you can, um, writing offers and and through that process of negotiation, the the value and the price of your property will come up in that in the negotiations. Right. And so you get the best price if you really you know market your property aggressively when yeah. it comes to listing it. But it is a great time to sell. Yeah, it would seem like yeah. right now if you were a home seller, meaning you had that forecast in the next few years, yeah. you might want to really take a good look at this market because we don't know what's going to happen with interest rates. We don't know necessarily what's going to happen next, but we do know right now things are looking good. Yeah. So Dale, on your side, for the homeowner um, who bought their house a year ago, let's say, and mm -hmm. thought, well, yeah, we got, you know, we bought our house. Maybe, they, maybe at that time they even felt like they paid too much because prices had gone up so much from the lows of, you know, 2010 and mm -hmm. 2011. Do you think that they would be surprised if they checked on it today what their home's worth? Absolutely. I had a, uh, just even recently, a client who bought a home FHA, um, I want to say last October, September, October, kind of towards the end of the end of September, I believe. And we were able to just close on his refinance, get him out of the FHA loan into a conventional loan. He put some, some, you know, work into the home and what he was, you know, he up, did some upgrades, 
but the but our appraisal came in so much better that he was even able to get under 80% loan to value. And that just blew my mind in, wow. in a year. It was La Mesa. It was, a, I mean, it's a really nice area. How much did the house go up in value? It went up, he bought it, I believe at 440 and it appraised at 540. Wow. I mean, it was, it was incredible. Now that, I mean, that's the except, it's not, you know, the rule that's kind of, you know, kind of a anomaly with it. He him, had to be shocked about that though. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. But he uh, did get a really good deal on the place. So there are still good deals out there, but overall, if you get 5% equity in your home and you bought the, the house FHA, you can refinance into a conventional mortgage and get rid of your more monthly MI, even though it's a lender paid MI, you take a little bit higher of a rate, but you, you lower your monthly payments dramatically. Yeah, yeah. That's, and that's really the key. That's where, if you're a homeowner where you can save money, the, the opportunity that's knocking right now is we're right there, yeah. Yeah. mortgage insurance. That's this insurance that you pay that you know yeah. really helps the bank make sure that they're protected in case you default. That's what it's for. But if you have enough equity, you don't have to pay it. Here's the thing, the bank doesn't check on that you know, every day to yeah. see, do they have enough equity? Do they have enough equity? Can we take the mortgage insurance off? Yeah. Well, with they FHA, do they never take it off. Right. You never get rid of it. And yeah, they lowered the MI amount, you know, this year, but it's still not, it's it's still, it's, you know, a big chunk of your, of your payment. It's almost as much as your property taxes. Right. Yeah. So if you're paying that much yearly and it, it's not tax deductible, it's not, you know, it's not helping you, why not get rid of it? Oh, get rid of it. For Especially sure. early on in your loan when you haven't, been paying the in, through those first five years of interest on your mortgage. When you pay early on, you know, and you can refinance, you're not like you're starting your mortgage all over again. You know, it's not like you're at year 20 and now you're starting back at year 30 again. You're within the first year, right. 18 months, you get rid of it and have that lower payment for the life of the loan. Right, and all you need to do really to check on that is just get an appraisal or even just get a, maybe even a comp search to start. You yeah. know, you could see, okay, is it in the ballpark? I just think a lot of homeowners out there don't realize how much the property's worth, and therefore how much money they could save. Like yeah. you mentioned, three, four hundred, five hundred bucks a month in MI. Yeah, that's pretty common now. Yeah, yeah. I remember when that was crazy. Yeah, people would like would just be like, no way. Yeah. yeah, I don't want the financing. But you know, here we are in San Diego County, which is a huge geographical area, huge, and we have so few homes for sale, mm -hmm. so many people who want to live here. Ten thousand new residents coming in every year. Yeah. We're not making ten thousand new houses. Yeah. No. We just aren't. No, we're not. And that is the equation you really have to look at. No. Well, and that's what people, when people, you know, come to me and they're looking and they, and they want to buy a house with limited down payment. And, you know, maybe there's a few things in there, you know, they don't have a good reserve amount. FHA is a great loan. You right. know, you get in there, they can, the lender can pay a bunch of your closing costs, maybe all of them. And you don't, all you have to come in is with that three and a half percent down payment, which is really low. What I always try to tell my clients is this is, the FHA loan is not a loan you want to think about keeping for the life of your loan. You know, you want to think about, I'm going to keep this 30 years, so I'm going to buy down the rate because of that MI. Yeah. So the fact is, is if you can get that, if you can get into the house with just your down payment and in a year refinance into a lower rate, you're getting the advantage of the conventional mortgage with mm -hmm. no MI and you're, you're basically only having to put down that FHA down payment to get right. there. So it's like you, there, you, you know, you're using the market to right. get there. And that appreciation of 5%, 4 to 5% a year, which is what we've seen, is right there. Yeah. And, and what's funny is, and I'd like to get your opinion on this, Tisha, because a lot of times people are always talking about payment, 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 but the down payments also go up when prices go up, mm -hmm. right? Has that been a problem for any buyers that you've talked to? Uh, not too much. I, uh, there's a lot of different type of financing and using Dale. I, you know, he's my brother. You use Dale? Yes, I use Dale. <laughs> and you refer actually, to Dale? actually, as he's speaking, I'm thinking about how I need to refinance my own house That's right, right now. <laughs> yes, but there's a deal. Yeah. <laughs> you you got to do it. Yeah. You got to look at it right now. You just, you know, it's just crazy. I mean, you'll yeah. be able to quickly find out, you know, what your appraised value is probably going to be, yeah. uh, and that really tells you the tale. Yes. Right off the top. Exactly. So, so down payments haven't been a big issue for home buyers then? Uh, not too much because um, there's that FHA uh, program with the three and a half percent down. A lot of people qualify for that right. and the, the debt to income is a little easier to qualify for too. So with Dale and you know usually the buyers we can help them with their closing costs um, through the process. So you know the three and a half percent that's a good deal to buy a house and like Dale said refinance a year later and you know. Be in good shape. Yeah. I mean, that's the, the, rents that's are the so goal. High. Right. At the end of the day, it's the goal to refinance a year later. I mean, nothing's a guarantee, yeah. but at the same time, with the, where rates are with FHA, I mean, lo I mean, a lot of people are still getting sub four rates on on FHA loans and getting 
big rebates from the, the bank to pay their closing costs. Right. And looking at rents, you know, they're just so high that you look at buying and the tax benefits of that and you just think it's a no-brainer. And you know what, you're, I'm glad you brought that up because yeah. we talked about the perfect storm. Uh, right now in San Diego, what's happening is we have the influx of people we mentioned, 10,000 new people moving to San Diego, becoming residents here every year. We're not making that many homes. Uh, and then you also have a situation where, you know, interest rates are low, which is making it affordable for people to be able to buy homes. But then you have rents. These are the things that mm -hmm. kind of weren't the same in the last boom, right? We did have lower yeah. rates back then. The low, rates are lower today than they were yeah. then. You know, so we, if you go back and you say, all right, well, what was different about the last boom and this boom? The supply and demand is just crazy. Yeah. Back then you couldn't rent a place. I mean, it was impossible. People yeah. were trying to rent, they're giving it away. Yeah. They're like, oh, you might have to take a thousand dollar a month hit yeah. on this investment property. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's when people were buying investment properties yeah. and, take, and taking a thousand dollar cash flow hit. That's not the way it is now. No. It's not like that now mm -hmm. uh, because there are, I think, less people who can qualify because of credit issues that happen in, in the bust, yeah. if you want to call it that. And you actually have to have a job. And you have to fully qualify. <laughs> you actually have to really qualify. Yeah. So if you add all those things together, there's opportunity there. But I'll tell you right now, if you're a home seller, meaning that you know in the next three years you're planning on selling your home, take a hard look at this market. Take a hard look at it because you may, you know, two or three years, you may wish you'd sold today. Yeah. And same thing, if you are a homeowner, you just bought a house, let's say it's been a year or maybe even less, maybe eight, 10 months, Take a look. Yeah. You might be surprised mm -hmm. what the property's worth and how much money you could save. Daisha Dale, thank you so much for coming today. I really Thanks appreciate your insights. Sure. The story with Story Estates. Not only is she a great real estate solver. agent and a champion on the real estate debate, situation. which is a very difficult cases, show to win, wrong. but she knows this market inside and out, which is exactly